information given to previous prophets. So there's no similar. Yes, here's Johnny. All right. Okay, guys, I hope it was a good time. Right. Sorry about that. Okay, guys. Okay, how are you? Here's Johnny. Okay, let's see. Everyone here? <clears throat> What's up, Lopez? Hey, everyone, how you doing? World changer. Shalom, bro. Sam and the family. Okay, guys, good color on you, bro. Really? You like this shirt? It's a straight out of Compton, baby. Straight? No, it's not on Compton. I'm sorry. Straight out of Modesto. When I was in Modesto, I bought it. Guys, big dates. Pray miraculous intervention in Jesus' name because I'm tired. Miraculous intervention in the love and mercy and compassion of Jesus. February 10, 19. Keep me safe and sound from all problems. Ask the Lord Jesus for miraculous favor, February 13, with the locals here. <clears throat> that God grants me favor that they work with me for the glory of Jesus, right? That's February 13. And pray I start my new life in my apartment, February 15. So February 10, 19, God save me from the corruption in Illinois. Please, Lord, please, tired, I need deliverance. I really believe in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to answer the prayers of his beloved. You too? Hupati, darn, man. You're going to make me cry, Sahi Christian. Pray for Sahi Christian, too. He's got something on February 13. February 10, 19 for me. Jesus Christ is real. He is alive. And he does answer the prayers of his beloved. Do pray for me and fast for me. February 10, February 19. And for miraculous favor here, to be favored by the locals here, February 13. And then to move in my place, safe and sound, February 15. So please, guys, do covenant with me and pray. Okay, thank you, Sai Christian. Make me want to hate you. So you're going to have a good day, and I'm struggling. Man, dude. No wonder I don't like him. All righty then. Okay. 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 I wish you all the best, Sam, and you too. Yeah, don't wish I Christian the best. You know, wish me the best, this guy. Yep, I do. Yeah, exactly, I do. My eyes. Pray in Jesus' name. I don't have health insurance. Pray in Jesus' name. Jesus is my healer, my doctor. He keeps, pray again, keeps my sight strong, perfect sight, spiritually and physically. Right. I will be getting glasses soon, God willing. So keep praying. Right. I pray. Like I said, I don't have health insurance. So I'm trusting the Lord Jesus, his provision to keep me healthy. And then when my time has come, that'll be quick. And I can enter the presence of the Lord. Could you quickly say why up as we start? Uh, Turb, my brother, what's your fascination with Yaakov? Uh, I, I don't get it. Why are you so fascinated with this guy? Our female pastor, Hebrews 1.8. In Jesus' name, may the connection say strong. Please, Father. Please, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. Ya Allah. Let me know if the connection is okay. So do pray for me, world changer, for that miracle. God will protect me from that corrupt, wicked agent of the devil in Illinois. So Hebrews 1.8. Let me ask you again. A pastor or a preacher? Female pastor or female preacher?
No, his research is terrible, Turb. I want you to Google, and you'll find that people took his hidden codes and used the same method. Is the connection good? I don't know. It's like freezing up on me. I don't know why it's messing up. Yeah, it's freezing. Is it my – is it going to be – yeah, it's freezing, man. Is that my end or is it YouTube? I've never had a freeze like that. So let's wait a few more minutes. Let's see. I don't know. This never happened. Usually it buffers, but no, it froze. Shamir, don't pass the buck and blame me. It may be YouTube. Something wrong with YouTube. All right? So let's see. All right. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, let's change. All righty then. Hold on, buddy. Let's just wait a few more minutes. Hopefully it'll go smooth. If not, oh well. That's why I hate this internet here. See, we froze again. Froze again. Come on. Come on. Okay. Let's see. Maybe now the internet here. I'm by the router. Oh, I thought I did. I'm by the router. I'm just waiting a few more minutes, folks, before I even start. So I don't start talking and then I have to shut down. Sam, did everything go okay with the registration business? Yeah, yeah, it went wonderful. God blessed me and gave me favor there. So now I need more miraculous favor. I really do. I'm tired of living like this, honestly, in Jesus' name. Okay, that worked on the 80s on your Xena TV, Sam. Yeah, I know, say Christian. Okay, we're just waiting. Anyway, I'll pray in a minute. But Turb, are you listening, Turb? Hopefully it'll go smooth. Are you listening? Okay. That same hidden codes that Yaakov Ramsel used, others employed that same method to show Muhammad is prophesied in the Old Testament, Buddha is prophesied in the Old Testament, and they also showed using those codes you can prove that Jesus is said to be a false messiah. See, that's the research Yaakov Ramsel and Grant Jeffrey never shared with their people. What do you mean, focus my camera, Michelle? If you tell me what to do, Michelle, I'm going to send you to Greece. My camera's focused. What do you mean? What's wrong with my camera? Not again what? You jail Ray, not again what? I don't know what you're asking. What are you asking? Not again what? Oh, my goodness. What looks blurry? Guys, is my camera good? It's good on my end, Michelle. You want me, guys want me to shut down then? Let's shut down because you guys are complaining too much. Bunch of, bunch of complaining people. See, for most people, it's clear as sky. Okay. Stop hating. That's why I want to wait a few more minutes before I even begin to make sure the connection warms up. Come on, Netta. Don't be saying that. Don't give me false hope. Because I, Christian, thinks I'm an ugly guy, which is why I can't find the woman to marry me. See? See, didn't I just say it? Say Christian, right? See? Hey, first and last, stop waiting for a Protestant believer to bail you out. Are you going to help me here or what? Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, it's it's ironic. The ones who think I'm handsome, they're married or they're retired. I'm not saying Marcy is. I don't know how she is. Right? They're like in their 60s and 70s. But the ones who are single and beautiful, they don't think I'm handsome. What's up with that? Why is it only the ones who are already married and think I'm handsome from a pure heart? They're, they're saying it as sisters in the Lord who love me as a brother. You're handsome, Sam. But what about those single, beautiful Christian women? Where are you guys to say I'm handsome? Darn it. Man. Okay. 
Now, I don't know about you, bro, world changer. I don't need men to tell me I'm handsome because I'm going to start getting scared. Okay. So, Liza, are you telling me? So are you going to tell me I'm handsome, Liza? Now, Liza's single, you see? She's single, not married. But she won't tell me I'm handsome. She's scared. You have the face of mother. Uh, you mean to say I have the face that only, only a mother can love? Thank you. That was a nice shot. Of course I'm sinning, man. I'm a sinner. The, when I wake up, I'm sinning. When I sleep, I'm sinning. Dominus, when don't I sin? Now, if your sister is gorgeous and beautiful and she looks like Jennifer Lopez, send her my way. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Hey, Rick, Mark, why are you quoting Surat the Yunus? See, look at how Liza J said it. You see, she's smart. You see what Liza did? She said it generally. All of the members of the A team apologetics are handsome. See, she doesn't want to say specifically you to give me the wrong impression. You're good, Liza. You're good. You, you're good. Rick, Mark, why are you quoting the Quran on me, chapter 12, where Joseph was so beautiful that the woman started cutting themselves by accident. What a wonderful story. Now, he won't debate me, Michael Pappas. That's why he challenged me to a fight. I guess the connection is good, so let's begin in prayer. Let's begin in prayer. You are one-man army. Is it because I'm overweight and big? But hey, look, you guys got to admit, by the grace of the triune God and the goodness of the Lord Jesus, I've lost a lot of weight from before. And still, 50 pounds, I'll lose and keep it off in time. Michela, I thought that women love a guy that's passionate and strong and dominant. But now you're saying that my temper scares people. At least the worst thing you'll get from me is a sidekick in the jaw. La, 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 ha, la, 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 ha, ha. It ain't over till the fat Jiro sings. La, 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 ha, ha, me, la, 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 la. Okay. With that said, let's begin. <clears throat> we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. And we love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask, <clears throat> by your grace and mercy, grant me the health I need to do this. Perfect my sight, spiritually and physically. Fill my lungs and my chest and throat with life from your presence, Holy Spirit. And anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants. And please, Holy Spirit, enable me to recall the passages correctly and interpret them perfectly for the glory of Jesus. Save me from error. Save me from stammering. Save me from confusion. And save us, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus. Save us from our flesh, our own sinfulness, to overcome our flesh by your power. Save us from Satan. Save us from this world. Save us from its corruption. And please, Holy Spirit, <clears throat> Show up in a miraculous way on February 10, February 13, and 19, and save me from this wicked agent of the devil. Please, Holy Spirit. And use me to glorify Jesus. Use me to bless the church of Jesus Christ and bless everyone here. Fill us with wisdom and knowledge understanding. Give us the power to understand the word of God, to love the word of God, to live it out perfectly by your power for the glory of Jesus. Bless the internet connection. And please, Holy Spirit, provide our daily bread. Watch over our loved ones. Watch over my angels, my two daughters. Preserve them, Holy Spirit. Remove any and every man in their lives that doesn't belong there. Remove Martin and keep them safe from all these men and bring them to me, their Baba. Please, Holy Spirit, please. We need you. We depend on you, and we are in love with you, and we love you. You are the eternal spirit of the Father and the Son, so please have your way. In Jesus' name. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yahovah Rapha, heal spiritually and physically and emotionally and mentally. And bless my ability to see spiritually and physically. In Jesus' name. Yep, in Jesus' name. We'll be good. Okay, guys. Are we in the saddle now? As you saw the thumbnail, you see the, the design of the thumbnails? You see how the YouTube, my YouTube page is slowly... Looking better. It's being beatified. You thank Protestant believer 
because Protestant believer is a whiz. He's a tech guy. And so he's now going to be working on my YouTube channel, making it look more professional. So pray for Protestant believer. Pray for a first last. Pray for the, the moderators here that help me to help you, serve me to serve you. They don't get paid for this. They're doing it out of their love for Jesus Christ. And when he's here, thank him, right? He can't be here right now. He's busy. And so said, here begins. Yeah, all right. Sorry about that. It froze. In Jesus' name, for your glory, Lord. You don't need me. We need you. Yep, I know. It's going to be like that until we get good connection. So pray. Sooner than later, I get good internet in my place. Okay. With that said, here begins the second part in the series, using the Jehovah Witness Bible, using the Jehovah Witness Bible, to prove the Trinity and the deity of Christ. Mac, uh, diophysite or miophysite. Christ is truly God and truly human, and yet he's one eternal person. We all agree on that. Even those who are miophysites, if you ask the Coptics who are miophysites, is Jesus still a human being with a physical body? They'll say yes. So at the end of the day, Mac, Jesus is truly God and truly human. And the resurrection means that Jesus raised his physical body that's part of his human nature and glorified it, made it immortal. So I don't know of any Christian that denies that Jesus is truly human with a glorified physical body. So even a miaphysite, Mikia Fratamia, means one. It's a Greek word for one, and phusis is nature. In the Coptic tradition, they believe that the humanity of Christ was subsumed, taken into his divinity, so his divinity basically swallowed up his humanity. But if you ask them, is Jesus, does he still have a physical body, a human nature? They'll say yes. So it, it is not a view that denies that Jesus has a physical body, a human nature. Okay? They don't deny that. They, they simply explain that his humanity has been subsumed, taken into his divinity. It's been deified. Why, Mac? Mac, you know I'm going to block you and send you on your way because you set me up with a question that you don't want the answer to. Here, I'm going to ask you a question, and if you don't answer correctly, you're going to be gone, Mac. Why do you assume that if Jesus has two natures, he has to do, be two persons? How do you know that? Are you God? Are you God to say that it's not possible for a person to have two natures and still be one person? How do you know this? How do you know it can't be done? No, you see, he's being smart. He's not asking to learn. He's trying to challenge me to prove that his position, miaphysitism, is correct because obviously he's Coptic or he leans towards that. So, Mac, here's my question. Answer because you're not going to last in my channel. This is what I don't like. People pretending to want answers when they're setting me up with their questions. Listen to me, Mac. How do you know that God is incapable of taking on a second nature how do you know that Jesus, who's God the Son, cannot take on another nature and still be one person? How do you know this, Mac? Are you God? Are you Jesus? Are you the incarnate one? To tell me that Jesus Christ, who's God Almighty, is incapable of taking on a second nature. Are you saying, Mac, wouldn't this mean two persons? Why would it mean two persons, Mac? Why would it mean two persons? Why would it mean two persons, Mac? Because you don't understand it, you're a fallen, imperfect, finite, sinful, temporal creature. And to you, you can't understand how one person can have two natures. Who cares what you think? You're not God. Your opinion doesn't matter. So are you going to stop trying to pontificate? Okay, now, Mac, you got to go, buddy. Notice what you just said. I just explained for the past two minutes. Before you block him, hold on. Uh, Sai Christian, if I have to define nature, you got issues too. I'm going to have to block you as well. Okay. Mac, I just told you, how do you know that Jesus can't take on a human nature, a human soul, and still be one person? You see? Let me repeat my question again, Mac. You better answer correctly because you're not looking good so far. 
How do you know that Jesus, who's God Almighty, cannot take on a human nature and all the properties of a human nature, like a human soul, and still be one person? Why can't he still be one person and take on a human soul and human spirit? How do you know he can't do that and still be one person? You didn't answer my question. Let's see how long you're going to last. Mac, you're wasting my time. I want to begin my topic. How do you know that can't be done? Are you God to know? Okay. Send this guy out of here. You see the stupid response? And you tell me why I call people stupid. Get out of here. Don't come back to my channel ever. I don't want to see you here. Send him out of here. Okay. He still didn't get to understand my question, right? You see how stupid this guy is? And guys, I don't care if you get upset with me. I cannot tolerate stupidity, idiocy, masquer masquerading as intellectualism and as Christianity. Don't ask me a question to set me up. You're going to embarrass yourself. He still didn't understand my point. Why is it necessary for Jesus to then be two persons if he takes on a human nature with human soul? Who told you Jesus can't do that and still be one person? See, to ask the question is to answer it. Right? You get my point? Okay. So don't ever ask me any stupid questions. I used to believe what Robert Moore used to say. No stupid, no question is stupid. No, 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 no. There are stupid questions that are so stupid, it's an insult to my intelligent intelligence. It's an insult to intelligent people. Some questions are stupid. Because Robert Morey says, no question is stupid. Yes, Morey, I have to disagree with you. You are dead wrong. Yes, there are questions that are stupid. Okay. Anyway, with that said, let's begin in Jesus' name. Now, guys, let me remind you what the topic is. You asked me to start a series helping you to witness to the Jehovah Witnesses using their Bible to prove the true doctrines of the Christian faith. So being your servant, I decided to do that. So you see the title. Read the title. Jehovah Witnesses Bible and the Trinity. Don't you dare ask me a question not related to the topic. I only started this series because you asked me to, you wanted me to, and I'm serving you for the sake of the Lord Jesus. So please do not insult me and disrespect me by asking me a question that has nothing to do with the topic. Please, you asked for the series, right? So let's focus and learn, show you how to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Trinity, the deity of Christ, the personhood of the Holy Spirit, and other core doctrines of Christianity from even this perverted Bible which you can read online for free, jw.org. Now, let me just remind you what Joe's Witnesses believe about Jesus. Okay? Let me just remind you, uh-oh, boring. Here comes Hater Wood, and I'm going to have to see him today at the conference. Hey, by the way, thank you, Hater Wood, for responding back to my voice text to you and your posse. What time do I speak tonight? In other words, you didn't even respond. Now, you see this dumb, filthy dog, this Arabian nightmare? He says, screw JWs. He meant to say, screw Muhammad, because he's a filthy dog like Muhammad. Send him to Mecca to smooch the black stone. Yeah. See? See that language? Arabian nightmare? If only David Wood had a backbone, he wouldn't allow trolls on his channel to use such language like, screw this guy and that guy. But he doesn't have a backbone. He's an evangelifish. Hater Wood is an evangelifish. And it's not going to be pleasant to see him tonight at the conference. I don't know if you guys know I'm teaching tonight on Joe's Witnesses and Christology. Yeah, hater would. Can you believe it? He's got his own clique and posse, the 17 apologetic YouTube ministries. We're cool. And yet the greatest apologist wasn't there. Me, myself, and I, baby. And when I sent him a voice message, hey, what time tonight? You think the guy even gave me the time of day? Right? You 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 white supremacist evangelifish. No wonder the black Hebrew Israelites hate the white man. You give them all the reason to. Now that said, let's begin in Jesus' name. Let me explain to you what Joe's witnesses believe. Okay? Are you guys ready? 
because I want you to know what they believe about Jesus. Brothers got a good point. I like that. <laughs> Abdul Halij, he's imitating Zachar and I. Brothers got a good point. Brothers got a good point. In chapter 3, verse 52, the Quran. And chapter 11, verse 49. And then the... All right. Brother, get a good point. All right. No, Marcy, the reason I wasn't on the video is because these are full-time YouTubers. They've already established their YouTube channels. Uh, they're professional at what they're doing. I'm still an amateur, and Lord willing, I'll get there. Eventually, I'll get there, and then I'll join them and school all of them. Now, let's focus on this. Now, I don't know what's wrong with the Internet. Hopefully, it's okay. Brother, make a good point. All right. Hopefully it stays. Pray for the connection, please, Lord, for your glory. You don't need me, but use me for your glory. Okay, now, this is what the Jehovah Witness believe about Jesus. Guys, pay attention, please. Okay, you ready? Are you ready now to get into the meat of the matter? Because now we're going to use their Bible to prove that Jesus is Jehovah. He's not the Father, he's not the Spirit, but he's one with them. Okay, you ready? Okay. They believe... They believe, by the grace of God, as this connection stays strong, all right, okay. they believe that Jesus was the archangel Michael. Pay attention. He was the archangel Michael, the first creature of Jehovah God. The first creature that Jehovah God created was the archangel Michael. Now, when it was time for Jesus Christ to come into existence to save humanity, the Archangel Michael ceased to exist. Pay attention. The Archangel Michael ceased to exist, and then God created a human life in the womb of Mary and transferred the life force of Michael to that human baby, to that fetus. In other words, they don't believe that Jesus is an angel who became an angelic human. Jesus, the man, came into existence when Mary conceived him. That's when the human Jesus began to exist. The Archangel Michael stopped existing, but his life force and memories were transferred to that human fetus, that embryo in Mary's womb. Did you guys understand what I just said, what they believe? Okay, let me turn it this way a little bit. You understand what they believe now? So they don't believe Jesus was the Archangel Michael in the flesh. Archangel Michael stopped existing when the human Jesus came into being. The only thing is the human Jesus had the life force, whatever that means, the life force and the memories of the Archangel Michael, whatever in the world that means. Even Joe's witnesses don't understand what they mean by that. Now, here's what happens when Jesus died. Okay, here's what happens when, when Jesus died. When Jesus died, the human Jesus wasn't resurrected. The human Jesus stopped existing. He went out of existence. The Archangel Michael was recreated with the memories of the human Jesus. So now in heaven, there is no human Jesus. It's the Archangel Michael with the memories of the human Jesus. That's what they believe. That's why you'll find a citation from Charles Taze Russell. I should have brought it up. Forgive me, I didn't. But Google it. Google it, you'll find. Charles Taze Russell, who's the founder of the Joe's Witnesses, he wrote, the man Christ Jesus is dead. He's forever dead. Do you understand now what they believe? Even though they'll call him Jesus, if you ask them, is that Jesus in heaven, human? They'll say no. That's the spirit creature, the Archangel Michael. So what happened to the human body of Jesus? It was destroyed. It was annihilated. It was wiped out of existence. So then why do you call him Jesus if he's the Archangel Michael? Because he has the memories of the human Jesus. You get it? Do you understand what they believe? Exactly, Jonathan Simon. God bless you. You got it. Michael existed, ceased to exist, and then existed again. And the human Jesus that existed had the life force of Michael within him and the memories of Michael within him. But for all intents and purposes, he wasn't the same person as Michael because Michael ceased to exist. 
Then Jesus died and he was wiped out of existence. Then Jesus died and he was wiped out of existence. Okay, is it now making sense what they believe? Pray we get over 200. Yeah, Adam Shifa. More people, Lord. Use me to reach more people. Okay, do you understand that now? I just want to let you know what they believe. Now, what do they believe about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not a person. He's Jehovah's active force. He's Jehovah's energy, his power, his active force. So only the Father is Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is the Father's active force, his power, his energy that he uses to influence people, right? And Jesus no longer exists. It's now the Archangel Michael with the, with the memories of the human Jesus, right? So they don't have the same Jehovah you do. They don't have the same Jesus you do. They don't have the same spirit you do. They don't have the same gospel you do. David, stop asking me that question, please. Radioactive. It's obviously that you're new to this channel. If you follow my channel and if you've been watching my videos, Radioactive, and if you've been, no, don't, don't hide him. Hold on, medic. Calm down, buddy. <whistles> Calm down. My goodness. <laughs> okay. You would know I'm a diehard Trinitarian who worships the triune God as the true God. And I believe Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. That's why you're shocking me because it seems like you've been here before. I've seen your name. Why in the world would you ask me, am I affirming Jehovah's Witness doctrine? Come on, man. Have you not checked my channel? Tell me easy and I will get rid of you. Say it again. Tell me easy. Radioactive. Be stupid and say easy to me. Again, one more time because I want to send you out of here. Go ahead. Say easy. <clears throat> Go ahead. Say easy again to me. Tell me how to run my channel. Let me get rid of these nuisances. Hold on. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Don't ever tell me how to run my channel, Radioactive, and don't ever tell me take it easy. Don't dictate to me on my channel and pontificate if you want to learn. All right? People won't learn. I'm here to maintain order. No chaos. This is not a free-for-all. You guys don't have to be here. I love you guys for being here and allowing me to be used of the Lord to bless you. And I'll keep blessing you and serve you for the sake of the Lord. But don't come here and pontificate. Don't come here and try to debate me or ask questions that are actually attempts of challenging me because you're not going to last long. And don't tell me how to run this channel. Please don't. Don't. You start your own YouTube channel and you run it the way you want, like Hater would. Okay? Now, with that said, let's go into the meat of the matter. Are you guys now ready for me to go into the Jehovah Witness Bible? Go into the Jehovah Witness Bible to use their Bible to prove that the Trinity is true and that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. Who's ready now? Are you sure you're ready? Ready means you're going to give me your undivided attention for the sake of the Lord. Yeah. Okay, guys. All right. Let's begin. Let's start. All right. Let's start with, let's go back to. Let's read Jeremiah 17, verse 10. Follow with me. Jeremiah 17, verse 10. I don't know how many series I'll do or how many parts in the series I'll be doing. I'll try to do at least enough where you're going to have such ample evidence from their scriptures to conclusively and irrefutably prove, even from their Bible, God is a trinity, Jesus is the God, man, the Holy Spirit is a person, and salvation is by grace through faith in Christ alone. I'm going to make sure to give you enough ammunition to do that as you serve Joe's witnesses with the hopes of seeing them get saved. Jeremiah 17.10, we're reading the New World Translation. Thank First Last for being here to help me to help you. Read with me. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart, examining the innermost thoughts, to give to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. Pay attention. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart. Who's doing this? Jehovah. Examining the innermost thoughts to give to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. Guys, please read what you just heard me read aloud. Jehovah searches hearts. Jehovah examines the innermost thoughts. Jehovah gives to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. Now, 
Let's go to Revelation 2, verse 18, and skip to 23. Revelation 2, verse 18 and 23, those two verses, pay attention to what the Son of God says in the Jehovah Witness Bible. To the angel of the congregation in Thyatira write, These things that the Son of God says, pay attention, these things that the Son of God says, okay, send Wayne out of here because he just insulted my intelligence. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, Jehovah, he says, yeah, but it doesn't say Yahweh. Get him out of here. Okay, that really hurt my brain. That insulted my intelligence. Revelation 2, 18. To the angel of the congregation in Thyatira, right? These are the things that the Son of God says. So it's the Son of God speaking. The one who has eyes like a fiery flame and whose feet are like fine copper. Now notice what the Son of God is going to say in 23. This is their Bible. It's the Son of God speaking. And I, that's the Son of God speaking, will kill her children with deadly plagues so that all the congregations will know that I am the one who searches the innermost thoughts and hearts and I will give to you individually according to your deeds. Whoa. Whoa. Now let's post Jeremiah 17, 10 and Revelation 2, 23 back to back. Jeremiah 17, 10 and Revelation 2, 23 back to back. Compare what Jehovah says and what Jesus the Son says. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart, examining the innermost thoughts to give to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. I, Jehovah, do this. Revelation 2.23, the Son of God is speaking. How do you know? Verse 18 says, this is what the Son of God says. I, the Son of God, am speaking. And notice what he says. And I will kill her children with deadly plague so that all the congregation will know that I am the one who searches the innermost thoughts and hearts, and I will give to you individually according to your deeds. The only person commenting is first last. Everyone still on board? All right, good. No, Jesus didn't claim to be the living water, David Julius. Don't help me to help you, David Julius. Jesus claims to give the living waters. Get your facts straight. And it's Jeremiah 17, 13, not 17, 3, brother. Don't help me to help you, please. Please don't help me to help you. You guys, we're going to, are going to use passages that are going to be hard to prove. See what you guys are doing? Yeah, I'm going to now take a moment to try to correct some of you. You guys keep bringing up passages that you think are strong that are not. So you're trying to help me to help you, and you're not. You're distracting me. Here's why. The arguments you're giving, they are not as forceful and strong in silencing the Jehovah Witness arguments. I'm trying to give you the most solid arguments. Here you guys are chiming in and making my case harder. You get my point? You understand what you're doing? You're not helping yourselves. Zechariah 2, 10 to 11. Yes, I do believe it's Jehovah speaking, and Jehovah says Jehovah will send me. But they're going to tell you no, Jehovah's not speaking. It's now Zechariah saying, that when this happens, then you know that Jehovah sent me to you. Why are you using weak arguments that will take you much longer to prove your case? Why don't you just listen to what I have to say? Because the arguments I'm going to give you can't be refuted by any honest Bible lover. You understand now? You're not helping me. You're actually making it harder for me because then I'm going to have to tell you how they're going to respond to you. Now, how is the Jehovah Witness going to respond to this? Jesus uses the very language of Jehovah and applies it to himself. You see the kind of arguments I'm trying to give you? Ones that you can't escape and get away from. You with me there? Like Anthony is telling me, uh, deal with the Christophanies of the Old Testament. See, already telling me how I should teach you how to reach the Joe's Witnesses. This guy, Anthony, wants to impress me that he witnesses to Joe's Witnesses and he knows what he's talking about.
This is a, and I'm being honest. When people can't listen and have to chime in, that is a symptom of pride and wanting attention and affirmation. And all of us want it to some extent because we're fallen. Now, see, David Amos, after now I correct him, I'm going to block him. David Amos, let me show you John 8, 58 in the Jehovah Witness Bible, and you're going to leave now. This channel is not for you. John 8, 58 in the Jehovah Witness Bible, okay? And David Amos, you're going to have to leave, all right, after this. But just wait. Jesus said to them, most truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. See, David Amos, you just humiliate yourself to a Jehovah Witness because their Bible doesn't say, before Abraham was, I am. Now you have to go, friend. Find you another channel. This is not for you. God bless you and the Lord be with you. Send them out of here. Are you guys now going to be patient and let me show you the best arguments to use against Joe's witnesses? Let's see. Let's see who's going to be able to do that. You guys ready now? Or do you want to help me? And give me passages that's not going to help you with a Joe witness. Okay. Angelo, let me show you how. Their Bible reads in John 8, 58. One more time. John 8, 58. Okay. Jesus said to them, most truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. It doesn't say I am. So now why are you going to use John 8, 58, before Abraham was born, I am, when that's not how it reads in their Bible? Because you guys are not familiar with their Bible, you're going to embarrass yourself by quoting the wrong passages. Do you guys want to make the most effective witness to the witnesses in the hopes that God will use it to save them because they too need to be saved? Do you guys want to make the most effective witness? Or are you going to keep using these arguments that don't work because you don't witness to the witnesses? When someone quotes to me John 8, 58, that's proof they are not witnessing to Joe's witnesses. You with me there? Is, is it making sense? Am I helping you how not to evangelize and how to evangelize? Honestly. And I keep saying like a broken record, hear me out. Let me make my case. Go back and study my arguments. Ask the Spirit to show you where I'm wrong. And to save you from those errors and connect, correct it to me, not to repeat them. But you guys can. You got to chime in. Ooh, Zechariah 2. Ooh, John 8, 58. Ooh, he, ha, ooh. Who are you impressing? Honestly, who are you impressing? You see, I don't get impressed by this, right? So do you really want me to do the series and help you make the most powerful case possible from their Bible? With the hopes of not winning the argument with them, but winning them to the true God so they don't perish. What do you guys want me to do? Tell me. I don't have to be doing this, honestly. I don't. All right. So again, don't help me to help you. I've been witnessing to Joe's witness. See, people don't know this. They, they associate me with Islam, but I've been witnessing to the Jehovah's Witnesses and hearing the top Jehovah Witness apologists for years. I know how they argue. Do you know why? Like the, the sister or the brother yesterday that we had to block when he told me, why do you listen to Catholic apologists? Because I want to know what they're saying, what their best arguments are and objections so I can be prepared and not get caught off guard and be embarrassed. You understand? Okay. I'm going to give you an actual encounter where I got embarrassed. You guys, uh, with a Jehovah Witness, where he embarrassed me. Because I didn't know about their Bible. Okay? I didn't know that about their Bible. And I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you to go to Google. Go to Google. Put Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall, Elston Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. So you know I'm not lying. I'm even giving you the location. Jehovah Witnesses. Kingdom Hall, Elston, E-L-S-T-O-N, Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. There's a Kingdom Hall. It's still there to this day. I brought my King James Bible, and there was a Spanish guy, very arrogant Spanish guy, very nasty and rude. And I quoted 
King James Version, 1 Timothy 3.16. First last, put 1 Timothy 3.16. King James Version. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. I go, you see? God was manifest in the flesh. He opened up his Jehovah Witness Bible. He goes, that's not what my Bible reads. Now let's see 1 Timothy 3.16 in the Jehovah Witness Bible. In the Jehovah Witness Bible. Indeed, the sacred secret of this godly devotion is admittedly great. He was made manifest in the flesh. What happened to the word God? It's gone. It's gone. And I got embarrassed. I was shocked when I read it. I go, your Bible says he was manifest in the flesh? He goes, yeah. And I got shocked because I didn't know about the variant readings. Okay? Is that what you want to happen to you? Yeah, this was a long time ago. This was in the late 90s, Turb, when I was just learning. When I was just learning in the late 90s. Is that what you want to happen to you? Do you want to learn the hard way? Do you want to learn the hard way and misquote or quote the wrong verses because their Bible doesn't read that way? Because Razzles, the same reason why Paul quoted Greek pagans to prove his point to the Greek pagans. Do I really need to answer this again? Are you trying to upset me? I answered that yesterday. Razzles, answer this question. Why did Paul quote Greek pagan poets who were corrupt idolaters to prove the truth of the Christian faith to the Greek pagans he was witnessing to. Why would you ask me that question? Why would you insult me by asking me that question? Why wouldn't you use their own sources to glorify Christ and use it against them to get them to see the truth? If a Jehovah Witness believes this is the perfect Bible, Razzle, that means... Any Bible you quote that contradicts theirs, they'll reject. So then why not use their own weapon against them? Right? So Razzles, you see, again, you insulted me. I don't know what it is about Christians today. So are you saying Paul lowered himself when he quoted Greek pagans to the Greek pagans, Razzles? Acts 17, 28. Are you better than Paul? More spirit-filled than Paul? Do you know more than Paul? Do I need to yell at you? Can you stop while you're ahead? Because I don't want to block you, brother. You saw my point three minutes ago, and you still made that comment. Are you looking to get blocked? Let me know so we don't waste each other's time. And then people why wonder, I got a comment from someone telling me I'm too angry, and I told them don't ever come back to see. I'm the one who gets the reputation because I have to deal with this. Acts 17, 28, pure, pure sounds. Yes. Razzles, I'm going to answer your question, and then I'm going to block you. Where have you been all these years? Haven't you been watching David Wood and I use the Quran and the Hadith to prove the truth of Christianity? Where have you been, Razzles? You need to not leave my channel. This is not for you. Go to David Wood's channel. He's for you. You got to go. Bye-bye. Why, why, why Rick Mark? What did Rick Mark do? Okay. Folks, let me tell you something. You're not helping me build up the channel. And it's not about numbers. It's about the glory of Christ. But I want to bring more people in. You know why? I got some guy named David commenting saying, Sam, you're very angry, you know, and you need to be more patient to draw more people. I said, don't come back to this channel. Stay away from my channel. Are you guys really trying to cause me to stumble so that people listen to this and say, what's wrong with this guy? Is that what you guys are trying to do? Why is it hard for Christians to listen? Pure sounds. Razzles needs the goats. See, pure sounds. Some people, this is not for them, this channel. They're not going to benefit here. They have to go somewhere else. I don't mind. Go to Hater Wood. He's, you know, 
He's very simple. He's not too complicated, not too bright either. Definitely ugly. Okay, now, focus, folks. By the time I'm done with the channel, we're only going to have sincere, sold-out Christians who love the word and want to learn another perspective and then test it. Okay? I don't know what language this guy is writing. You keep writing in a foreign language, we're going to send you on your merry way too. Okay. Folks, let me take a moment to tell you why you need to know their Bible and stop making mistakes. Okay. Let me show you John 10, 33 in the King James Version. John 10, 33 in the King James Version. Okay. And even said, oh, when you call those people dogs, you lost six viewers. Okay. John 10, 33 in the King James Version. Guys, read. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. You see? You're a man, you make yourself God. Powerful, right? Now let's look at the New World Translation. John 10, 33. The New World Translation. Notice how they translate. The Jews answered him, we are stoning you, not for a fine work, but for blasphemy. For you, although being a man, make yourself a God. Now, who's going to be stupid enough to quote John 10, 33 to a Jehovah Witness? You make yourself out to be a God, lowercase g. Now, who's going to be stupid enough to quote this verse? Okay. You, you see what they did with these translations? God bless you, Picard, and bless your four-year-old, Sophia, and fill Sophia with the wisdom of Jesus and the love of Christ. Okay. Do you see? Do you understand why I said, don't help me to help you? Because you're going to quote the wrong verses. And then now you're going to have to waste time in explaining why that's a mistranslation. Do you really have the time or even the knowledge of the Greek to explain why that's a mistranslation? Do you really have that time to do that, honestly? Do you really want to waste time on these issues when then you lose the point of prov pr providing such an irrefutable case to rock their very foundation? Because now it goes into translation issues. Okay, you understand now? Let me give you a couple more so you guys understand. Don't quote the typical passages that you use for other Christians without checking in the New World Translation. Let me give you another one. King James Version, version Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and unto all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. Now pay attention. To feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Wow! God has blood. God purchased the church with his own blood, the blood of God. See, this is Jesus as the God-man. He is God, who as a man shed his blood to purchase the church. What a powerful witness to Jesus being the God-man. He's God. And he has human blood because he's human. One person, two natures. Wow. Wait, Rick Mark. Wait. Let me embarrass you, Rick Mark. Jehovah Witness Bible, Acts 20, 28. Let me embarrass all of you guys. They're saying hallelujah, amen. Here's the Jehovah Witness Bible. No, it's not powerful. Here's the Jehovah Witness Bible. Okay. I don't know why the admins are not getting rid of these new systems. Do I have to pay you to get rid of them? Here's the Jehovah Witness Bible. Pay attention to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to shepherd the congregation of God, which he purchased with the blood of his own son. Wow. It doesn't read the same. The Jehovah Witness says, say that God purchased the church with, church with the blood of his own son. Now, how many of you are ready, willing, and able to prove that's a mistranslation? How many of you are ready, willing, and able to prove it's a mistranslation? And then you lost the point. You lost the opportunity to rock the very core of their foundation with passages that they haven't mistranslated that are irrefutable because you guys, 
don't want to learn and listen. You're trying to tell me how to help you guys. And it's not, I'm not trying to be arrogant. God crushed my flesh, crucified my flesh. Folks, I've been witnessing to these people. I know what works and what doesn't work. I know what works and what doesn't work. So can you stop helping me and let me help you, honestly? Okay. Do you want me to give you other uh, examples as well? Yes. I'm trying to save you time. The errors I made, you don't need to make if you listen. Let me give you another example. Are you ready for more examples? Okay. King James Version, Philippians 2.9. Thank you, Mickey Ifrata. Mickey, so you see the arguments I gave you, they can't refute. It's irrefutable by the grace of the triune God, right? From their own Bible, right? Thank you. All right. Philippians 2.9, King James Version. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name, pay attention, which is above every name. God gave Jesus the name above every name. Now read Philippians 2.9 in the Jehovah Witness Bible. Watch this. For this very reason, God exalted him to a superior position and kindly gave him the name that is above every other name. They inserted the word other. So it's not God gave him the name above every name. God gave him the name that's above every other name, meaning that he doesn't have the name that's the highest name. This is why I call the Jehovah Witness Bible that it suffers from the disease of other situs. Their translation suffers from the disease of other situs, where they keep inserting the word other in these passages, even though the word other is not there in the Greek. Other situs. Hold on, I got to charge the thing. And then their translation also suffers from the lowercase g syndrome. Their translation suffers from two diseases. Two diseases. Other situs, because they always insert the word other to rob Jesus of his glory, and the lower G syndrome, right? The lower G syndrome. Every time, mostly every time, where there's a text where Jesus is called God, they place the word G in lowercase G and put A before, like John 10, 33 or John 1, 1. John 1, 1 in their translation is, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was a God. Lowercase g. Now compare John 1.18 in their translation. Okay. John 1.18. Yep, it's scarier than coronavirus. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten God. Do you see? Lowercase g again. Did you catch it? Uh, only begotten, lowercase g. Lower g syndrome. Did you catch, catch it right there? You see it? So John 1.1, 1, 1, it's a God, lowercase g. John 1.18, only begotten God, lowercase g. John 10.33, you, a man, make yourself out to be a God, lowercase g. Are you seeing the pattern and why you can't use these passages? Are you seeing the pattern? So is it clear that I've been doing this for a while and I'm trying to help you avoid mistakes and know what to quote? Yeah, yeah. now, do I need to give you more examples or is this clear? Can we now proceed to the evidence? Let's see. One day, one day, one day we're all going to be on the same accord. One day. No, Rick Mark, you can't use that either. Rick Mark, do you want me to turn John 7-3 against you? Is that the same Rick Mark and a different Nick? Why'd you change your Nick? Rick Mark, what happened? This guy's excited. He wants one more example. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's not that's not a big point in Genesis thirty one fifty three because that's debatable how to translate that passage. Okay, I thought you changed your name, brother, because Rick Mark. It looks I thought it was lowercase R. See, you see what happened to me, Rick? That lower G syndrome. It affected me because I thought the R and the M in your name were lowercase. So now it's lower R M syndrome. You see what they did to me, Rick? Yes, and to my brother Jay, who just texted me, yeah, Revelation 22, 18, 19 reads the same way in their Bible. You see what happened to me, Rick Mark? Lowercase g syndrome affected me because I thought you had a lowercase r and lower. I'm seeing lowercase everywhere. Lowercase. Everything is lowercase now. <laughs> right? Okay, now. Now, Rick, Mark, let me now answer this one final objection. Other situs and lowercase g syndrome or lower g syndrome. Rick, you know how they're you know what they're gonna tell you about John 17 3? You know what they're gonna tell you about John 17 3? You you want are you ready for their response or no? Okay. Let me show you, Rick. John 1 9. John 1 9. Let me show you. Guys, let me show you how they're going to answer John 17, 3. They say, well, there's only one true God. And if Jesus is God, he has to be a true God. Okay, now understand the argument. The true light that gives light to every sort of man was about to come into the world. We all agree, even Joe's witnesses, the true light here is Jesus, right? He's the true light that came into the world. He's the true light. Right? And the Greek word is the same. Alethinas. Alethinas. Built. Do me a favor, brother. Don't go off topic built for speed. Don't quote other verses not relevant to what I'm talking about. Please. As long as you don't mock and insult and blaspheme the true God, Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge and destroyer, you're more than welcome to stay and listen. The moment you act up, I'm going to punish your prophet for you. Okay. Now, so listen and observe. Okay, now, Rick Mark, did you see Jesus is the true light, right? Everyone saw it? I know you are built for speed, but don't help me. Just pay attention. Don't go on other tangents, like Genesis 3153. Built, are you going to tell me something already, no, brother? So you won't stop, right? No, you are actually a Mormon heretic. Okay. No, I didn't say true God, Rick. True light, John 1.9. John 1 9, true light. Rick, pay attention, man. You brought up this argument. You better give me your attention. Do you see that Jesus is the true light? I didn't say anything about true God. That was John 17 3. Okay. Now let's go to Matthew 5 14 to 16. What does Jesus say about the disciples? Remember, Jesus is the true light. The word true is the same in Greek, Alethinos. You are the light of the world. Now, Rick. Does that mean the disciples are false lights because Jesus is the true light? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. But wait, Jesus, you're the true light. How can they be the light of the world? You see what you just did? The Jehovah Witness who knows his sources will tell you, yes, the Father is the only true God, not in contrast to everything else that's a false God. That's not what it means that he's the only true God. He's the only true God, even though other gods exist. Just like Jesus is the true light, even though there are others who are also light. They're not false lights. Okay, but listen then, pure sounds. Let me give you another example. Are you ready for the other example? Are you ready? For the other example, John 6, 30 to 34, Rick. Yeah, send boo-boo on his way to kiss his boo-boo, black son. John 6, 30 to 34. Then they said to him, pay attention. Then they said to him, what are you performing as a sign so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you doing? 
Our forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now watch what Jesus says. Jesus then said to them, most truly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. So now, Rick, Jesus is the true bread. Does that mean the manna was fake bread? Was the manna false bread, fake bread? Because Jesus is the true bread? What do you say, Rick? Is the manna fake bread because Jesus is the true bread? Are the disciples fake lights because Jesus is the true light? See, Rick, your response tells me, and I say this in love for you. Don't take this as me putting you down. You have not witnessed to witnesses enough. Because if you've been witnessing to the witnesses, they would raise this saying, who told you? The Father is the only true God that other gods don't exist. You don't even know what true God means. True doesn't mean he's the only one. True means he is the only uncreated, almighty, eternal God, the source of deity. All these other gods are creatures that he created and upon whom he gave their divinity. See? See? Did everyone get it now? How not to witness to the witnesses? See, now I have to do another session. It's the second session. Instead of going into the meat of the matter, I had to now, again, lay more of a foundation. Do more preparatory work so you guys learn how not to witness to the witnesses. Rick Mark, it will work with a Joe witness who's not sharp. But I guarantee you, I promise you, that Joe Witness was going to go back to the Kingdom Hall. It's going to go online, do a search. It's true God, and they're going to have answers for you. You don't believe me? Go to JW.org and type in John 17, verse 3, and see they've already fully equipped their members to answer these objections. Love you too, fascinating vision. Mickey, it's only working with those Joe's witnesses who may be new, don't know, but I guarantee you they will go back and find the answer because that's what they've done to me, and that's how I know their answer, Mickey. How do you think I know this? You think I know this? Or I was confronted by Jehovah Witness apologists who then brought up these examples to silence our misuse of John 17, verse 3. Okay? Okay. Let me give you another one. Hebrews 8, 4 to 5. Hebrews 8, verses 4 to 5. I hope these sessions are not going to be burdensome to you. I hope not, because it seems like I'm taking much more time than I need to. Yeah, well, they'll tell you yes, because Jehovah gave Jesus his ability to give illumination to all the world, so you need Jesus to receive the illumination for everlasting life. That's what they're going to say, Hosanna. Okay? Now, Hebrews 8, 4 to 5, read with me. Hebrews 8, 4 to 5. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are already men who offer the gifts according to the law. Watch this. These men are offering sacred service in a typical representation and a shadow of the heavenly things, just as Moses, when about to construct the tent, was given the divine command, for he says, see that you make all things after their pattern that was shown to you in the mountain. So notice the tabernacle on earth is a shadow, right? The tabernacle on earth is a shadow, right? That means it's not the reality. It's a shadow of the reality. What's the true tabernacle? Go to Hebrews 9, read 22. To 26. Hebrews 9, 22 to 26. Okay. 
Yes, according to the law, all things are cleansed. Pay attention. Jehovah Witness Bible. With blood, and unless blood is poured out, no forgiveness takes place. Therefore, it was necessary for the typical representations of the things in the heavens to be cleansed by these means. But the heavenly things require far better sacrifices. For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with hands, which is a copy of the reality. Guess what the word reality is? It's the word true. It is a copy of that which is true, but into heaven itself, so that he now appears before God on our behalf. That was not, right, this was not done to offer himself often as when the high priest enters the holy place from year to year with the blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have to suffer often, often from the founding of the world. But now he has manifested himself once for all time at the conclusion of the system of things to do away with sin through the sacrifice of himself. Did you see what it says about the heavenly tabernacle? It says the heavenly tabernacle is the reality. Let's check what the Greek word is. Let's check what the Greek word is. Hebrews 9, 24. Here it goes. Let's check it out. Yep. Alethinon. Alethinon. That's the same Greek word. Here you go, folks. So now, Rick Mark, let me ask you and everyone else. It says that the earthly tabernacle... That's a shadow. The true tabernacle is the one in heaven. That's the true one. Alethinon. That's the true one. Reality. So does that mean the earthly one was fake? I have a lot of articles on Joe's Witnesses on my blog that you just put in Joe's Witnesses will pop up, Lopez. Does that mean the earthly tabernacle was fake? Does that mean the disciples are fake lights? Does that mean the manna was fake bread? Because Jesus is the true bread, the true light, and the heavenly one is the true tabernacle. So now are you ready for that kind of Jehovah's Witness to give you this kind of response to silence your use of John 17, 3? Are you ready? Okay. Lopez, I just repeated myself the third time. Lopez, my brother, from a different mother. You know, I love you, but not that much. I just said, if you go to the blog, you'll find many articles on Joe's Witnesses if you search for Joe's Witnesses. Do I need to repeat the things three times because you're a Trinitarian? You sinner, you wicked, ugly-looking sinner. You need to repent because that's not your true face. It's not your true face. Okay. Now, guys, what do we learn? What do we learn right here? We learned that you can either listen to the best presentation possible and reaching Joe's witnesses for the true God so they can get saved, or you can continue to pontificate and comment and share verses that you think are airtight. So what do you guys want to do now? 74 minutes into the discussion. Hopefully. It's, it's a little blurry. Hopefully it gets better. What do you guys, honestly, what do you guys want to do? You don't need to be here. It's an honor that you're here to allow the Lord to use me to bless you. But if you're here, I'm, I'm assuming you know how to get the most out of these sessions. Right? I'm assuming you're here because you're trusting the Spirit, not me. No, don't trust me. That the Spirit is going to use me to help you to make the most out of these sessions so you can learn how. Okay. I just did. It worked, actually. How to make the most out of these sessions. And to be the best, most effective witness you can be for the glory of the triune God. Right? Did you learn that you can't just quote any verse when you're, you're witnessing to the Jehovah's Witnesses? 
Did you learn that now? I just want to make sure. So you got to learn what verses to use and what verses to avoid. That's what I'm trying to give you. I don't know what it means. They sent you an upgrade, Joe. <laughs> What's that? I don't know what that means. Okay. With that said, let's now go into the meat of the matter. Guys, help me to help you. Don't pontificate. Don't share. Just listen for now, honestly. You can start your own YouTube channel. You can teach people, right? Yep. Rewatch it, Matthew. You're learning, Matthew, how not to witness to the witnesses and how to witness to them. How to use their Bible and how not to use their Bible and know which parts to use. Oh, that's what you meant, Stacy. I don't know what you mean by Isaiah 9 and John 6. John 6 has nothing to do with Isaiah 9. What's John 6 got to do with Isaiah 9? Okay, now. Let's go back and look at the passages. Are we ready now? What was the passage I used to show that Jesus is claiming to be Jehovah God according to their Bible? Let's see if you guys remember. What was the passage I used to show that Jesus claimed to be Jehovah God? Does anyone remember? Thank you, Efsa. God bless you. Not you, first the last man. I want them to answer because they forgot. All right. One more time. Jeremiah 17, 10. Let's go back again. Jeremiah 17, verse 10. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart. Pay attention. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart. Guys, listen, please. Now it's time to listen. No distractions anymore. I, Jehovah, am searching the heart examining the innermost thoughts to give to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. I, Jehovah, I'm going to repeat it like a broken record. It better sink in by the power of the Holy Spirit so you can use it. Jehovah speaking. I'm searching the heart. I, Jehovah, I'm doing that. Examining the innermost thoughts to give each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his works. Revelation 2, 18 and 23. You don't read, need to read all of it to see it's the Son of God who's speaking. So we're going to read Revelation 2, 18 and then 23. To the angel of the congregation in Thyatira write, these are the things that the Son of God says. I, the Son of God, am speaking these words. So Son of God, what are you saying? The one who has eyes like a fiery flame and whose feet are like fine copper, I will kill her children with deadly plague so that all the congregations will know that I am the one who searches the innermost thoughts and hearts, and I will give to you individually according to your deeds. What's the connection here? Son of God speaking. And Son of God says, then all the congregations will know when I kill this false prophetess and her children, her spiritual children, then they'll know that I, the Son of God, am the one who searches the innermost thoughts and hearts, and I will give to you individually according to your deeds. Excuse me. Lord Jesus, yes. Why are you quoting the words of Jehovah in Jeremiah 17.10? That's what Jehovah said in Jeremiah 17.10. That's what Jehovah does, not someone else. Why are you quoting those words and ascribing it to yourself, claiming to do what only Jehovah does? Because I've been told you're the Archangel Michael. Did you catch it? Thank you, Crack. You're getting it, Crack Music. You got it. Who didn't get the connection that the Son of God just spoke as if he's Jehovah God of Jeremiah 17.10, claiming omniscience because he's saying he knows all the hearts and omnipotence, and he has the ability and the resources to repay you accordingly. The omni-attributes of Jehovah. He just claimed it for himself using the language of Jehovah. Did anyone not get it? Did anyone not get it? Everyone got it? I just want to make sure. If you're not getting it, let me know. 
Oh, Charles Dickens, you need to listen to yesterday. All right. Okay, now, Psalm 62, 12. Psalm 62, 12. Psalm 62, verse 12. Watch what happens. Also, loyal love is yours, O Jehovah, for you repay each one according to his deeds. You, Jehovah, repay each one according to his deeds. Proverbs 24, 12. Proverbs 24, 12. We're using their Bible and using the right passages. Proverbs 24, 12. If you say, but we do not know about this, does not the one who examines hearts discern it? Yes, the one who watches you will know and will repay each man according to his activity. The one who examines hearts repays each man according to his activity. Hmm, another reference. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Look, the sovereign Lord Jehovah will come with power, and his arm will rule for him. Look, his reward is with him, and the wage he pays before him. Okay? Isaiah 62, 11. Isaiah 62, 11. Look, Jehovah has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, Look, your salvation is coming. Look, his reward is with him, and the wage he pays is before him. Now, Matthew 16, 27. I mentioned it yesterday. I'm going to mention it again. Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father. Wow. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he, the Son of Man, the Son of God, repay each one according to his behavior. <whistles> wow. That's the Jehovah Witness Bible. Thank you, Jonathan. May he bless you too. Okay, let's. I don't think you caught it, so let's do it again. Matthew 16, 27. Put it back to back with Isaiah 40, verse 10. Because I think you guys are sleeping on me. I've tortured you, and now you're asleep. Matthew 16, 27, Isaiah 40, verse 10. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father, right? With his angels, then he will pay each one according to his behavior. Look, the Sovereign Lord Jehovah will come with power, and his arm will rule for him. Look, his reward is with him, and the wage he pays is before him. What's going on here, folks? Did you see the repeated teaching? Do you see the repeated teaching of the Old Testament? The repeated teaching of the Old Testament? Jehovah is the one who examines the hearts. He's coming with his reward. Repay everyone according to what they have done. Jehovah's coming to do that. Jesus says... I am the son of man. I'm coming in the glory of my father with my angels and my reward is with me. Repay you according to what you've done. Jesus, why again are you speaking as Jehovah God of the Old Testament? Matthew 16, 27, Revelation 2, 23. You claim the very things the Old Testament ascribed to Jehovah. Why are you doing this, Jesus? You're supposed to be the archangel Michael. Sinking in? Please, pure sounds. Don't tell me to slow down. Go back and re-listen to it. Rewind and go to the blog and put Joe's Witnesses and read the articles. I can't slow down because you're too slow in writing. Come on, brother. Respect everyone else. You with me there? Yes, he's calling me Ben because he knows I'm Ben Malik. That means he's stalking me from my Facebook pages, you stalker. One of my names on Facebook is Ben Malik because they blocked my Sam Shimon account for a while, so I started another one. So we got a stalker here, folks. 
He knows me as Ben Malik, you little wicked sinner. Okay. Did you get that point before I move on to other points? Did you get that point before I move to other points? Okay, did you get it? From yesterday to today, I gave you irrefutable points that Jesus claims to be Jehovah God. Can't escape it. Can't escape it. If you're getting it, I'm going to move to some other points. We'll do another at least 20 minutes, God willing, if the Lord wills, of this. And I'm going to do more in the series. There's a lot coming in the series. If you guys are interested, because you told me a couple of sessions ago, yeah, 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 use the Joe Witness Bible to prove the Trinity. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it because you want it. You asked for it. Okay, but if there's someone confused, let me know. If there's someone confused, let me know. Anyone confused? Or everyone got it? Okay, Scott, let's see why you're confused. Let's see if you're playing games. Why are you confused? Let's see. Hold on. Let's see why he's confused. Go ahead, Scott. Tell me why you're confused, buddy. I don't want to drag too much. George, you can download my videos to your YouTube page. You can download my articles to your website. You can print them out, distribute them. Because if you sell them, I want money. Okay. Did you hear what I said, George? You can download my videos, my articles, print them out, distribute them, keep the name intact, the name of the author and the, the name of the video, and don't sell them because if you sell them, I want all the proceeds. All right. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm fighting with this. Uh, okay, connection good? So I can move on to another point? Connection good? La, 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 la. La, la, la. George, why do you think I'm doing this? So that you can use it for the glory of Christ. So you can use it in your witness. So you can use it in your ministry. So you can use it to bring people to the true God. And so that it can also strengthen you and bless you and refresh you. Crack, you went to a passage again that's going to take you too long to prove your case. It's going to take too long to prove your case because you haven't heard the Jehovah's Witness response to John 12, 37, 41. Okay, now with that said, let's go to another example. Isaiah 44, verse 6. As long as the internet connection stays strong, Isaiah 44, verse 6. And then I'm going to tell you how they're going to respond to your objection. <clears throat> this is what Jehovah says. <clears throat> the king of Israel and his repurchaser. <clears throat> See, one attack after the other. We plead the holy blood of Jesus Christ as our covering. Rebuke the evil one, Lord Jesus. Save us from his attacks. Now my voice is given out. This is what Jehovah says. The king of Israel and his repurchaser. I don't know why that's funny. Invoking the blood of Christ to shield us is funny. Crack? Yeah, you're cracked up, all right. And his repurchaser. Right? And his repurchaser. Jehovah of armies. I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me. So who's the first and the last? I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me. Isaiah 48, 12. And I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you how they're going to respond to this and then how you refute them. Isaiah 48, verse 12. Isaiah 48, verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, whom I have called. I am the same one. I am the first. I am also the last. Now, what does it mean for Jehovah to be the first and the last? Isaiah 41, verse 4 tells you. Isaiah 41, verse 4 tells you. Yeah, repurchaser means he redeemed you. He ransomed you. Isaiah 41, verse 4. Pay attention. Who has acted and done this, summoning the generations from the beginning? Summoning the generations from the very beginning of creation. I, Jehovah, am the first one, and with the last ones, I am the same. Here's where I need you to pay attention. Here, Jehovah explained to you what it means he's the first and the last. He's the first and last, meaning he's been there 
from the very start of creation with the first generation of human beings. And he's going to be with every subsequent generation of human beings to the very last one. So first and the last means Jehovah has been there from the start of creation. He remains with creation, guides creation, and will be there to the very end of the age. You understand what it means for Jehovah to be the first and last? First and the last? He's been there from the start, and he remains with each subsequent generation of creatures to the end of the age. I'm the first. I was there from the start. I'll be there to the very end with the last generation. And that's what Alpha and Omega and beginning and end means. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first, last, they have the same meaning. It means because Jehovah is outside of time, outside of creation, because Jehovah created time, space, and place, he can be there from the start of creation, remain with creation to the very end of the age. So these titles, first and the last, beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, speak to Jehovah being uncreated, eternal, and timeless, which is why he can be there from the beginning and will remain to the very end. Because unlike creation, he's not bound to time, space and place make sense you understand what it means it has the same meaning as alpha and omega beginning and the end which we discussed yesterday go back and listen to yesterday's session where i proved irrefutably jesus claimed to be alpha and omega beginning and the end okay i don't want to repeat things revelation 1 17 Relation 1, 17. Okay. Revelation 1, 17. Read with me. When I saw him, I fell as dead at his feet. And he, said his, and he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and last. I use this with Muslims too. And you guys have heard this. So I'm preaching to the choir. I don't read verse 18. Can you hear, hear me now, guys? Can you hear me now? The buffering should have stopped. Revelation 1, 17. When I saw him, I fell as dead at his feet, and he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and last. This is how I set up the Joe Witness and the Muslim. After I read the passages from Isaiah, I only read Revelation 1, 17. I only read Revelation 1, 17. I say, well, who's the first and last? Instinctively, they say Jehovah. That's Jehovah. All right. Verse 18. Sariaz is not following me either. Verse 18. Do not be afraid. I'm the first last. Now, verse 18. Watch here. And the living one and became dead. But look, I'm living forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of the grave. So I say, when did Jehovah die? You just admit this is Jehovah. And they'll say, he never died. That's Jesus. So Jesus claimed to be Jehovah because he claimed to be the first and the last. It works even with Muslims because in the Quran, chapter 57, verse 3, chapter 57, verse 3, what does the Quran say? But wait, I'm going to tell you how they're going to refute you. They're, they have an answer to refute you, and I'm going to show you how to refute them. He is the first and the last. The outward and the inward, and he is the knower of all things. That's the Quran. So here in the Quran, Allah is the first and the last. So you read that to a Muslim. The Muslim will say, yes, Allah is the first and the last. Then you read Revelation 117. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He placed his right hand upon me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. Then you ask the Muslim, who is that? They'll say, that's Allah. When did Allah die? Verse 18, and the living one. And I became dead. When did your God Allah die? He never died. So that's Jesus. So Jesus claims to be God because he's the first last and destroys your religion because he said he did die and came to life. al Masihu Akbar. But are you now ready for the refutation? Yeah, your mother is a whore and doesn't exist either. Okay? Notice that filthy, wicked name. So I want to insult you and your mother for giving birth to a dog like you. 
Okay. Are you now ready for the refutation? The Jehovah Witness has an answer because he's going to go to the website and he's going to answer you. Are you ready now for their response so you're prepared? And it's in my articles on the blog. Are you ready now for their response to you and how to refute them? You sure you're ready? Are you sure you're ready? Because you got to listen now how they're going to refute you. The Jehovah Witness will. Okay. The Jehovah Witness will tell you. See, there it goes. Again, the connection. Yeah. The Jehovah Witness will tell you Jesus is the first and the last in a different sense from Jehovah. He's not the first and the last the way Jehovah is. Here's what they're going to tell you. Jesus is the first one Jehovah raised to be immortal and the last one that he'll do it for. Let me repeat because you guys didn't hear me. This is how the Joe Witness responds. Joe Witness will say, <clears throat> Jesus is the first and last in that he's the first one that Jehovah made immortal and the last one that Jehovah will do it for. The first one Jehovah raised immortal and the last one that Jehovah will do it for. Do you understand their response? Do you understand their response? Now, what do they mean that Jehovah raised Jesus first to mortality and the last one that he'll do it for? Because the Jehovah's Witnesses believe everyone else will be raised by Jesus. Jesus is the only one Jehovah raised the mortal, and he'll be the last one that he does it for. Because everyone else, Jesus will raise. That's why he's the first and the last. Did you understand their response? If you got their response, because I'm going to show you how to refute them from their Bible. The sharp Jehovah Witness will answer that way because I know they've done it. They've gone to their website. They've gone to their books. And that's the answer they give. So now are you ready for the refutation to annihilate this objection? So Medic, they did it to you too, right? See, thank you. So you know I'm not making it up. Okay. If you got their argument, then now here's the response. You show them or you ask them, who said Jesus is the last one that Jehovah will raise? Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 14 in their Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 14 in their Bible. 1 Corinthians 6, 14 in their Bible. Watch. But God raised up the Lord and will also raise us up out of death through his power. So Jesus isn't the last one that God will raise immortal. God will raise all believers immortal as well. 2 Corinthians 4, 14. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 14. Knowing that the one who raised Jesus up will raise us up also with Jesus and will present us together with you. So Jehovah, God the Father to them, will raise up all believers as he raised Jesus. Did you hear me? It's not buffering on my end. Did you hear me? I want to see if it sunk in. So I go slow and I repeat myself. Okay. So notice in their own Bible, God the Father will raise all believers immortal like he raised Jesus. So then who told you Jesus is the first and last in that Jehovah raised him first and the last one that he will raise immortal? Who told you that? The Bible says Jehovah is going to raise all believers to immortal life like he did Jesus. So that means their explanation of first to last doesn't make sense. Because Jesus is not the last one that Jehovah will raise immortal. You see how easy it is to refute them? So then tell them, 
Now, why is he the first and the last? Your explanation doesn't make sense because he's not the last one that Jehovah will raise immortal. I just showed you Jehovah will raise all believers like he raised Jesus to immortal life. So then why Jesus the first and last? You still haven't explained it to me. I'm confused. How can he be the first and the last? What makes him the first and the last? You see now how they're going to refute you. How are they going to refute you? Do you understand the arguments I've given you by the power of the Holy Spirit training me and using me to train you? They are irrefutable. These arguments can't be refuted by any honest, God-fearing Bible believer. And that's where you have to pray the Spirit to convict them to see the truth. Do you catch it? So that means Jesus must be the first and the last in the same way that Jehovah is the first and last in the Old Testament. That's what I said yesterday, Rick Mark. Did you listen to yesterday's session? Because in yesterday's session, I explained how not to witness to Joe's witnesses. Okay. Did you see now how irrefutable? Well, Rick Mark, you need to go listen to part one of this session, bro. Because then you won't be following me if you don't listen to part one. And then I'm going to have to find you, lay hands on you, and bless you. Hey, you. Okay, now, you need to follow this way of arguing by the power of the Spirit. And trust the Spirit will now convict them. It's okay, Rick. You can go back and listen. It's Arco. You, you with me there? You can't get around this point. Jesus is the first and last in the same way that Jehovah is. And you just refuted their argument, their explanation of first and the last. You refuted it. No, Jesus is not the first and the last because he's the first one that Jehovah raised immortal and the last one that Jehovah will raise immortal. Where'd you get that from? These passages show that the Father will raise all believers in the same way he raised Jesus. So Jesus isn't the last one in that sense. They can't get around this. Making sense? Is it sinking in? Because now I'm going to add some brownie points. Remember what 1 Corinthians 6.14 and 2 Corinthians 4.14 said? Yeah, the Father, the Holy Spirit be glorified. Remember what 1 Corinthians 6.14 and 2 Corinthians 4.14 said? God the Father will raise believers to immortal life like he did Jesus. Okay? So who does it there? God the Father. Right? But now let's go to John 6, 39 to 40. John 6, 39 to 40. Get ready to be blown away. Their Bible, the Jehovah Witness Bible. John 6, 39 to 40. This is the will of him who sent me that I should lose none out of all those whom he has given me, but that I should resurrect them on the last day. Wow. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who recognizes a son and exercises faith in him should have everlasting life, and I will resurrect them on the last day. Hold on, Jesus. Who's going to resurrect believers and make them immortal? God the Father or you? Both. Him and I, together with the Spirit. I'm going to show you the Spirit in a minute. John 5, verse 25, and John 5, 28 to 29. In their Bible, John 5, verse 25, and then verses 28 to 29. Most truly I say to you, the hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who have paid attention will live. Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear His voice, the voice of the Son of God. So those in the graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and come out. Whoa! Wait, Jesus. By the power of your voice, you're going to resurrect the physically dead to life and bring them out of the graves? You're going to do it by your voice? <clears throat> yes. 
But hold on. Over here it says God the Father will raise them. Yes. So who's raising them? You or God the Father? God the Father and me. Together. Wow. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> First Corinthians 6, 14. And 2 Corinthians 4, 14 says, God raised Jesus, our Lord, and he'll raise us. But let's go to John 2, 19 and 22. <clears throat> By the power of the word of Jesus. Because when you say God, Mary, they're going to think the Father. Be specific. The power of the word of Jesus. John 2, 19 and 22. Jesus replied to them, tear down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I will raise it up. This temple you destroy, I myself will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple was built in 46 years, and when you raise it up in three days, you will raise it up? But he was talking about the temple of his body. When though he was raised up from the dead, his disciples recalled that he used to say this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had spoken. Okay, guys, I'm really confused. We're told God the Father will raise up all believers like he raised up Jesus. But then we're told by Jesus, he will resurrect all believers, in fact, all the dead out of their graves at the last day, and he raised himself up in three days. Who's raising Jesus to mortal life? And who's going to raise believers and unbelievers out of their tombs physically? One place says God the Father. Another place says Jesus. Do you see why we're Trinitarians? And notice what Bible I'm using. The Jehovah Witness Bible. Notice I proved all this from their Bible. John 10, 17 to 18. John 10, 17 to 18. Read. Read. This is why the Father loves me, because I surrender my life so that I may receive it again. No man takes it away from me, but I surrender. No man takes it away from me, but I surrender it of my own initiative. I have authority to surrender it, and I have authority to receive it again. This commandment I received from my Father. Wait, 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 wait. Jesus, you voluntarily lay your life, and then you receive it again? You take it up again? Yes. You will raise up your temple, your body in three days? Yes. But we're told God the Father did it. Yes. And by the sound of your glorious, beautiful, majestic voice, you're going to raise the dead physically from their tombs? Yes. And you're going to resurrect believers on the last day? Yes. But elsewhere we're told God the Father is going to do it? Yes. Yes. But now let's go to Romans 8, Romans 8, 9 to 13. Romans 8, 9 to 13. However, you are in harmony, not with the flesh, but with the spirit, if God's spirit truly dwells in you. God's spirit truly dwells in you. Guys, here's where I need you to listen. Please listen to this. Please. Here's the Trinity in your face from the Jehovah Witness Bible. If God spiritually dwells in you, that means you belong to God. Please, Father, please, Lord Jesus. Please, please. Sorry about that. Buffering. Sorry, buffering. Okay, now read. If God spiritually dwells in you, but if anyone does not have Christ's spirit, this person does not belong to him. Now I'm confused. Is it God's spirit or Christ's spirit that's in us? But now verse 11. Verse 11. If now the spirit of him, I'm sorry, verse 10. I meant 10, not 11. But if Christ is in union with you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Is it God's spirit in me or Christ's spirit in me or Christ in me in fellowship with me? All of the above. If you have God's spirit in you, it's Christ's spirit in you. It's Christ himself in fellowship and union with you. And then it says, 
your inner spirit, your inner man is alive because of the righteousness of Christ. Your body is still dying. Your body is still decaying. Your body is still prone to death. But your inner man, your spirit, your spiritual self is now made alive because of the righteousness of Christ. Oh, but it gets better. It gets better. 11 to 13. If now the spirit of him who raised up Jesus. So God raised up Jesus. So if the spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his spirit that resides in you. Wait, wait, wait. God the Father is going to make your bodies alive again by his spirit. So now who's going to make us alive? Who's going to resurrect us physically? The spirit of God, which is the spirit of Christ. And yet God the Father will raise us physically. But Jesus will also raise us up physically. I am confused. What's going on here? Jehovah's Witness, why does your Bible affirm the Trinity? I am confused. Then, brothers, we are under obligation not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are sure to die. By the Spirit, you will live. I'm confused. By the Spirit, you will live. Okay, guys, I'm confused. I'm confused. Romans 8, 9 and 13 said, God's spirit is in you, which is Christ's spirit in you, which is Christ in you in fellowship with you. And if the spirit of God lives in you, then God who raised Jesus will give life to your physical bodies by his spirit. So now who's going to make me physically immortal? God's spirit, which is Christ's spirit. Who lives in me? God's spirit, which is Christ's spirit. And if Christ's spirit is in me, then Christ is living in me. So who's going to make my body immortal? God's spirit. But elsewhere it says God the Father is going to make me physically immortal and raise me immortal like Jesus, like he raised Jesus. But then Jesus said he's going to do it. So who's doing it? Who's going to raise people physically? Is it God the Father? Is it the Spirit of God? Or is it Jesus Christ? Who lives in me? God's Spirit, Christ's Spirit, or Christ? Who raised Jesus? God the Father or Jesus himself? What about 1 Peter 3.18? 1 Peter 3.18. In their Bible. For Christ died once and for all time for sins, a righteous person for unrighteous ones in order to lead you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Who made him alive? The spirit. God the Father, he himself. Who made him alive? The spirit. God the Father and he himself. Who will give our bodies immortality, make us physically immortal, give life to our mortal bodies that are dying? God's spirit. God the Father, Jesus Christ. Did you see the Trinity in the Jehovah's Witness Bible right there? Everyone see it? Everyone saw it? Did you just see the Trinity from the Jehovah's Witness Bible? Okay. Who is the one who gives life? Who is the one who is life? Who is the one who gives life? Who is the one who gives life? John 5, 21. John 5, 21. Guys, read. Jehovah Witness Bible. I hope this is blowing you away. You're learning what to use and what not to use. John 5, 21. For just as the Father raises the dead and makes them alive, so, that all, so the Son also makes alive whomever he wants to. So the Father makes alive, the Son makes alive. Father and Son make alive. But then John 6, 63. Medic, come on, brother. The Holy Spirit is God, the Father's Spirit. Why are you doing this? Okay. John 6, 63. I want to smash your teeth in, Medic. Honestly, I want to hurt you bad. And then repent. At least you're a medical doctor. You can fix your teeth. Why would you ask me? Is it the Holy Spirit or God the Father Spirit? So the Holy Spirit is not God the Father Spirit? John 6, 63. 
It is the spirit that is life-giving. The flesh is of no use at all. The sayings that I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. Wait, wait, wait. John 5, 21 says, Father and Son make alive. John 6, 63, Jesus says, the spirit is life-giving. So guys, who makes alive? Jesus says, the Father and the Son. I and the Father make alive. And then he says, the spirit. And you'll never find a fourth entity. You'll never find in the Bible someone other than the Father, the Son, and Spirit giving life. You find three and only three. Let's put John 5.21 and John 6.63 back to back so you can catch it again. Only three and three alone. Father, Son, and Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Spirit. You'll never find a fourth one. That's why we're Trinitarians. Now notice this, Jehovah Witness Bible. For just as the Father raises the dead up and makes them alive, so the Son also makes alive, that's two, whomever he wants to. But then John 6.63, Jesus speaking in John 5, speaks in John 6.63. It is the Spirit that is life-giving. Okay, now Jesus, I'm really confused. Are you the one who makes alive, life-giving? Or is it your Father, or is it the Spirit? Who is it exactly? You got it? 2 Corinthians 6. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6. For those of you watching, are you been blessed now? Who has indeed adequately qualified us to be ministers of a new covenant, not of a written code, but of spirit? For the written code condemns to death, but the spirit makes alive. The spirit makes alive. Wait, I thought the Father makes alive. I thought the Son makes alive. Here in the Jehovah Witness Bible, the Spirit makes alive. He's life-giving. Why is it only three and not four or two? Because God is a trinity. And what Bible am I using to prove? Father gives life, makes alive. He's life-giving. Son makes, makes alive, gives life. He's life-giving. Spirit makes alive. He's life. He's life-giving. The Jehovah Witness Bible. Yes, Andrew, that's what it's referring to. 1 Timothy 6.13. 1 Timothy 6.13. 1 Timothy 6.13. Before God, who preserves all things alive. Wait, wait, wait. Who preserves all things alive? God the Father. How do I know? Because then it mentions Christ Jesus. So hold on. Is it God the Father who preserves all things alive, gives life to all things, and makes alive? Or is it the Holy Spirit? Or is it Jesus? Hebrews 1, verse 3. Hebrews 1, verse 3. He is the reflection of God's glory. Jesus is a reflection of God's glory, the exact of his very being. The exact representation of his very being. The Son is the exact representation of God's being. And he, the Son, sustains all things by the word of his power. And after he had made a purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hold on. Jesus, are you the one who sustains all creation, preserves all creation alive by your powerful word? Or is that your father or the spirit? Who's doing it? Guys, I'm confused. Is it God the Father who is life-giving, makes alive, and preserves all things alive, and raises the dead spiritually and physically? Or is it Jesus Christ the Son who makes all things alive, who's life-giving, who preserve, uh, preserves all things alive, and who raised the dead spiritually and physically, or is it the spirit? Just sit back and listen. Thank you, Anthony. If you just sit back and listen, you'll learn. Not that you need me to teach you. I'm sure you know your stuff, but this is the time to be listening and benefit from another as you want people to benefit from you. So, guys, who, who is the one who preserves all things alive? God the Father? Who's the one who raises the dead spiritually and physically? God the Father? Or is it Jesus or is it the spirit? According to the Jehovah Witness Bible. According to the Jehovah Witness Bible. 
right? Yep, hit that like button. And notice only three and three alone. There isn't a fourth person who makes alive, preserves all things alive, and gives life spiritually and physically. There isn't a fourth one. Only three, God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, Holy Spirit. Do you see why we're Trinitarians? You see why we're Trinitarians? Did it sink in? John 1, 3 to 4. John 1, 3 to 4. Jesus. John 1, 3 to 4. All things came into existence through him. They'll tell you that, Jesus. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. What has come into existence by means of him was life, and the life was the light of men. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus is the one who gave life to creation, Jehovah Witness Bible. And his life is what brings about light, meaning spiritual illumination, to know how to get saved. According to the Jehovah Witness Bible, it's Jesus. His life is the light of men. It's his life that illuminates us to find our way back to life. After sin entered the world and killed us dead. His life gives us that spiritual light illumination. And life comes from him. Life came into being by him. That's what Jehovah's Witness Bible says. John 1, 9 to 10 and 14. John 1, verses 9 to 10 and 14, and we're done for today. John 1, verses 9 to 10 and 14. The true light. So he's the true light that gives light to every sort of man was about to come into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into existence through him. The one who brought the world into being, the one who's the true light who illuminates all men, the one who gave life to creation, now and creation, illumination to creation, brought the world into being, now entered the world as a flesh and blood human being. So the word became flesh and resided among us. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. Catching it? Joe Witness Bible. But let me blow you guys away. Are you ready to be blown away? Let's read John 1, 4, back to back with Psalm 36, verse 9. John 1, 4, back to back with Psalm 36, verse 9. I didn't use any other Bible but the Joe Witness Bible. Yeah, please follow me. By means of him was life, and the life was the light of men. So, hold on. Lord Jesus, bless this connection, please. Okay, sorry. Yep, I know. It's buffering at a perfect time, too. His life is what gives light to men. His life, the life that comes from him, gives life to men, right? But now read Psalm 36, 9. With you is the source of life. By your light, we can see light. Wow. Jehovah is the source of life, and it's his light that illuminates us. But that's what John just said about the word that became flesh. Jesus is the source of life. He gave life to the creation. And wow. Right. Wow. Jesus is the source of life. He gave life to creation, and it's his light that illuminates us. But you just read Psalm 36, 9. You just read. Come on, man. Come on. I'm going to beat it up. I'm going to beat it up. How's it doing now? You just read, Lord Jesus, rebuke these demons, Lord. You just read. Jesus is the one who gives life. He's the source of life, gave life to creation, and his light illuminates us. But Psalm 36, verse 9 says, Jehovah is the source of life, and it's his light that we see, we see light. Did you catch it? Did that point sink in? Did that point sink in? Did that point sink in? So I want to know. I want to know. 
Folks, I want to know. Is it God the Father who preserves all things alive, who gives life and illumination and raises the dead spiritually, physically? Or is it the Son or is it the Holy Spirit? Who is it? Now, the last two passages, and we're done. John 11, 25 to 26, and John 14, verse 6. John 11, 25 to 26, and John 14, verse 6. Only from the Jehovah Witness Bible. Only the Jehovah Witness Bible. John 11, 25, 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And the life. Jesus saying, I am the life. The one who exercises faith in me, even though he dies, will come to life. And everyone who is lying, living and exercises faith in me will never die at all. Do you believe this? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, Jesus. Is it God the Father who's the life? Is it the Spirit who's the life? Or are you the life? And why is it only Father, Son, Holy Spirit that are said to be the life and not a fourth one? Why only three and three alone? Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh to the glory of God the Father, and even the Jehovah Witness Bible proves it. Glory to the triune God that in his sovereign power and his almightiness, he's left himself a witness in everything and everywhere, even in the corrupt Jehovah Witness Bible. That's how real, almighty, majestic the triune God is, that he's even left a witness of himself in this corrupt Bible. Glory to the triune God. Fight for us, protect us, and save us. Keep us holy and in love with you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And come sooner than later, Lord Jesus. Guys, big dates. February 10, February 19. I need a miracle. God, show up. Silence that wicked, evil demon of Satan in Chicago to muzzle her and leave me alone to set me free. February 10 and February 19. I need a miracle because then she can get me in trouble and get me out of here. I need favor February 13 with the locals here to favor me and work with me and see Jesus in me. And then February 15, I move into my new place. I need provisions. I need favor. I need deliverance. And I need my daughters. Covenant with me. Pray specifically. Lord Jesus, remove this man, any man from my children's lives. No man should be in their life except me. Please, Lord, bless me. Keep all men away. Specifically, I'm going to even mention your name because this man has no business in their life. Pray into their lives so they won't be damaged. Stop bringing men into their lives so they won't be damaged. Convict their Lord. Remove Martin in Jesus' name. Please pray by name. Okay? Please pray by name. Ask Jesus to remove this man, Martin. He has no business in their life. I'm their father. And convict her to stop bringing men into the lives of these kids. Stop destroying them. The blood of Jesus save them from your sins and convict you. Okay, guys, I need a miracle. February 10, 19, I need to be free and to do what God wants me to do here. Lord willing, I'll see you this weekend. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.